Hi everybody, this is Brian James from Rhino3D.com. In this video tutorial I'll be talking to you about Sub-D in Rhino 7. Here I've got several primitive objects in the scene. Let's talk about the building blocks that make up a Sub-D. You've got faces, edges, and vertices. You can control shift click these or command shift click them on Mac to sub-object select. If you control shift double click you can get edge loops or face loops as I'm showing. If you just left click and turn on the control points you can see the control point net. If you press the tab key you'll see a shaded version of that control point net. This is also known as box mode versus smooth mode for the sub D's. Box mode can be super helpful in flattening out areas of a sub D. And then toggle back into smooth mode. You can use the gumball to extrude new faces. You can also define edges of objects as creased or not creased. Here I'll select a row of edges on the sub D cylinder. I'll pick this one on the bottom too and then I'll use the command crease. You can see that edge loop of the sub D is now sharp. You can also crease and remove creases from vertices. Here I'll remove the sharp corner from the sub-D plane. If I zoom in on this edge loop in the back, I can use the command insert edge to add another edge loop parallel to it. If you sub-object select an edge or a face, you can also delete it with the delete key. Multi-sided faces are allowed, but for the smoothest topology, four-sided or quads are often recommended. One of the most useful ways to join sub-Ds is with the bridge command. You can use bridge to increase the edge loops between the two selected face groups. You can also use bridge on open edges. Keep in mind that Bridge wants the same number of selections in both sets. An important feature to understand about working with sub-Ds is that they can be converted into regular NURBS polysurfaces. The two NURBS command allows you to do this. If I toggle off the ISO curves, you can see the patch structure of the resulting polysurface. In an alternate workflow, you can also bring in mesh objects or create them from scratch in Rhino and convert those to sub-Ds with the command to sub-D. Note the three-sided faces on the top of this sphere. If I select every other edge and delete them, now I have four-sided quads at the top of the sphere. And that's a quick overview of sub-D geometry in Rhino 7. Thanks for watching.